In this video, I'm going to show you how you can find usage statistics for your perfumery raw materials. So, for example, if you were to buy a new raw material and you weren't quite sure how to use it, in this video, I'm going to show you a load of websites which will help you get some rough idea for some numbers of at how much or what level you might want to start trying to use those in your perfumes. Now, before I start this video, I do want to say when you get new raw materials, what I do recommend is actually going diluting them yourself down to 10% in perfumers alcohol and also 1% if you can. And then just learning how they smell at those different dilutions. And this is because already by doing that, you're going to get a really good instinctive idea for what level to use those raw materials at in your perfume. And by doing that, you may not even need any extra help. But if you do want some ideas or just a bit of reassurance that you're using these things at the right level, I'm now going to show you some websites which you can use to kind of look up for most raw materials, a usage level or at least a level at which other people use them at. So this first website here is great, it's called Unguentarius, I don't know how to say that. but. Um, you can actually go and literally search pretty much anything you want. So say you wanted to find Hedion, a really common raw material. You can go and so methyl dihydrojasminate, that's uh, its official name, but it is the same thing as Hedion. You can go and Google this if you want to check. And what this website does is it takes from a load of publicly available online formulas, it goes and finds the level at which Hedion is used in all of those formulas, and then it gives you the kind of statistics here. So in this case, what it's showing you is that on average, it's used at about 4%, but usually the range that's used at is between 2.2 and 6.5% of your formula. By the way, this isn't in terms of absolute concentration, but this will be in terms of your perfume concentrate. So at 4%, that's not 4% of your whole perfume, including all the alcohol you dilute it with at the end. That's 4% of the concentration of uh, different fragrance raw materials and oils you put in before you top it up with alcohol at the end. So what it's also then saying is the highest level it was found in a formula uh, was 22% and the lowest level was 0.20%. So this website is really useful and there are a lot of raw materials on here. Now another useful resource is actually the Perfumers World. So Perfumers World is an online store which sells raw materials and other things but they do give usually usage levels. So if I go to Hedion again and search for it. I should come up. So yeah, we've got Hedion here. And they've got their descriptions and you can purchase it, all of that. But this website does give you a usage level. So what they say is on average, Hedion's user roughly 10%. It can be used up to even 50% of your formula. And it's also used in smaller amounts down to something like 1%. So you can see that there's a very slight disagreement between this and the other website. Now, of course, you can go and use it technically at whatever level you want, but each of these websites will have their own database, and from that is how they gather their statistics, and this is just kind of like a rough guideline. Now, one final thing you can go and look at is actually manufacturers' websites. So I'm gonna give you an example. Say you're shopping on a website like Pell Wall, and this doesn't have to be Pell Wall, but it could be anything else, like Perfumer's Apprentice or another raw material supplier and say they actually give you the manufacturer, so in this case, IFF. Now, I'm sure you won't be too shocked to know that all of these websites that you buy your raw materials from in perfumery, they aren't actually manufacturing the raw materials themselves. What they're doing is they're going and buying them from other manufacturers and then putting them into small quantities that you would buy as a hobbyist and then reselling them. And this is because the manufacturers themselves, they won't even bother selling to anyone who wants to order less than something like 25 kilograms or 5 kilograms and for the ordinary person like you or me who's just making perfumes at home you don't need to order in those kind of quantities and in fact you probably couldn't because it's just too expensive. So say you've gone and got a raw material and they've given the manufacturer. Well there are actually three manufacturers which have really good online compendiums or kind of listings of their raw materials where they do give some information including often usage information. And those three manufacturers are IFF, Feminish, and Simrise. So each of these manufacturers actually has their own website. So IFF's is here, it's the Fragrance Ingredients Compendium. Simrise have one too, which is their ingredient finder. And also Feminish have one, which is their perfumery ingredients catalog. So if we take, for example, the Ambretolide, which is made by IFF, well, if we go to the IFF website, we can actually go and we can either search or we can just scroll down until we find Ambretolide. 
So that's just here. And we can see some basic information. So for example, the molecular structure and the categories of which um, the smell is meant to be in. And there's also some other kind of information down here. And one of these pieces is the typical use level. So this one says it's used from traces up to 2%. So that gives you an idea, say you're making a perfume and you're making a musk component to your perfume, say you're working on the base note, well, you might want to get some ambrosolide and use it in actually a fairly small amount. So let's say your musk base is going to be 20% of your final formula. Well, then you would use maybe ambrosolide just as 10% as that and that would be a high dosage and you might even want to go and use less. So this is just kind of a rough guideline to get started. Now you can also go to Simrise or Firminish and do the same thing. So for example on Simrise you can scroll down and find a raw material that you're interested in. So let's say benzyl acetate. Now benzyl acetate is quite a common raw material so even if it's not a manufacturer specific raw material, you might still sometimes be able to find that raw material on one of these websites. And again, it gives you some information about what it smells like. So jasmine, banana, fruity, those kind of categories, and gives you a recommended usage level of up to 20%. So again, that's quite a lot. So anyway, that's about it for these websites. I'll put all of these websites in the link in the description below in case you're interested in looking at them for yourself. And that was pretty much it for this video. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.